Welcome back to Plug Life Television and to the second part of the Balancing Social Equality episode of What Barriers Balancing the Rapid Charge to Electric Vehicles. Last time out, we looked at the affordability of electric vehicles and we found that a lot of progress is being made there. But if you don't have a driveway or a garage somewhere that you could easily plug the car in, how are you going to plug it in? This is a question that often comes up and it's one that we're going to look at today. Last time, we noted that the transition to a fully electrified and decarbonised transport infrastructure will rely upon the availability of affordable new or second-hand electric vehicles for people with lower budgets, and the ample availability of on-street charging infrastructure, or charging hubs, for drivers who don't have access to off-street parking. We've already looked at the affordability of EVs, and noted that excellent progress is being made, with EVs already being much cheaper than many people think. This time out, we'll look at the provision of charging infrastructure for people without off-street parking. There are some excellent examples of how this is being resolved. Oxford has been conducting on-street residential charging trials using numerous different types of charger. Some of the most interesting variants are retrofitted into lampposts, which have some spare electrical capacity having been switched over to energy-efficient LED lighting, instead of power-hungry sodium discharge lamps. Another innovative solution is a home charger with a cable gully. This involves the installation of a standard home charger on the front of a house, and a cable gully dug on the pavement immediately outside the house, with a metal cover which closes flush with the pavement, thus allowing the homeowner to safely run a cable across the pavement to their car without creating a trip hazard. This has the added advantage of allowing the user to change their electricity tariff rather than being tied to the tariff used by the operator of a public charge point, such as a standard Type 2 post or a lamppost mounted charge point. This means that people without off-street parking could still use off-peak or dynamic tariffs to save even more money on their car's electricity bill. However, whilst public charge points may cost more to use per kilowatt hour, the user doesn't have to pay for their installation, unlike a private domestic wall box so the savings associated with the installation of a private charge point must be factored in when considering the social equality of reliance on public on-street charge points versus having your own private charge point. Another solution being trialled across the UK is pop-up charge points, which reduce the amount of street furniture on the pavement until they're actually in use. Can you see the pop-up charger in this photo? Even when it's in use, the pop-up charger is mounted so close to the road, and therefore so close to the parked car, the pedestrians and cyclists wouldn't be that close to the edge of the pavement anyway. There's plenty of funding available for destination charge points. Energy Saving Trust Scotland and the Office for Low Emission Vehicles both have workplace charge grants for businesses to fit charge points to their car parks for their staff, which will give them reliable access to charge points for their commute. Olev also have an on-street residential charge point scheme, which covers 75% of the cost of installing a charge point outside your home. This requires your local authority to apply for the grant. But, bizarrely, only a handful of councils have applied for this grant funding so far. If you need a charge point outside of your home, pester your local council to make use of this funding. The sad reality is that some local authorities are more proactive, forward-thinking and logical than others, which means that some of them have shown very little interest in installing charging infrastructure themselves, which would result in them benefiting from revenue generated from charging sessions, which could then be invested into vital council services. Madness. Anyway, even if your local authority is too lazy and short-sighted to install their own charging infrastructure, if they're willing to give permission to one of the many private charging network operators to install charge points on public roads, pavements and car parks, then there's a plethora of networks in the UK who will gladly plaster entire cities with charge points because of the revenue that they'll generate. Thankfully, there are proactive local authorities too. Dundee City Council is home to four electric vehicle charging hubs, three of which are owned by the council. These act like petrol stations for electric cars, with each hub having six rapid chargers that are kept busy by the city's large population of electric taxis. There are also Type 2 destination charge points for locals without off-street parking, and people who are visiting nearby shops, with fair time limits for destination and rapid charging. Some of the hubs feature solar canopies and grid storage, the hubs have been such a success that similar ones have been built in Falkirk and Kilmarnock, with more coming online in the near future. Private network operators are starting to build hubs too. The Polar Network has built a similar hub in Milton Keynes next to the M1. 
Dundee is also converting the top floors of some of its existing multi-storey car parks into destination charging hubs, similar to this one in Bergen. Local residents are offered free parking overnight as their cars are trickle charged, as long as their cars are moved in time for the arrival of commuters in the morning. So what's it like living with an older, short-range EV and no off-street parking? Ask Elle. She bought a 24kWh Nissan Leaf in 2015, before any of Dundee's hubs had been built, and lived in a flat with no charge point. She did fairly high mileage each day, but through a mix of rapid and destination charging, she always kept her Leaf topped up and never had any issues. Not only that, she's driven her Leaf all across the country thanks to the rapid charging network that's in place already. There are many rapid charging networks that you'll likely encounter, including some that have destination charge points too. Chargeplay Scotland is by far the largest network in Scotland, and some of its rapid chargers are still free to use. The chargers are activated by RFID card or app, with some of the latest rapids also offering contactless payment. Instavolt and Engini chargers are often located in pairs or more, and offer contactless payment. I've found their reliability to be excellent. Note that Instavolt is DC only, so it's not compatible with the original Renault Zoe. Polar have a mix of rapid and destination charge points, usually individually located. They're rolling out contactless payment, and also have optional subscription services which can work out cheaper for high mileage users. Podpoint mainly have app-controlled destination charge points in supermarkets, but are also rolling out rapid chargers at selected Lidl and Tesco stores. Shell Recharge Rapid Chargers are starting to appear at Shell petrol stations across the country. Rapid chargers tend to be more expensive to use than destination chargers because the chargers themselves, and the grid connection required to install them, are both more expensive than simple lower power AC posts. However, if you don't have the option of installing a home charge point, remember to weigh this against the money that has been saved in installing a charge point at your home. The extra expense isn't that bad overall. For on-street destination charging, Ubertricity and Chargy specialise in the fitting of charge points into lampposts. If you need a charge point near you, and your local authority isn't willing to install one, they may be able to help, so it could be worth getting in touch. Check PlugShare to see how many destination and rapid chargers there are near you. So, there are already numerous local authorities in the UK who've taken a range of highly effective approaches at providing charging infrastructure for people who can't charge their cars at home. And if your local authority doesn't want to build up their own charging network, there are numerous private charging networks that will gladly do the honours. The charging network in the UK has expanded rapidly over the past decade, and that pace is only set to accelerate. So there we are, that's just a small snippet of some of the successful projects that have been trialled and are now being implemented at scale by some of the more forward-thinking towns and cities and local authorities when it comes to giving everyone access to charging infrastructure for electric vehicles. I particularly like the Cable Gully idea. I think that's a really neat solution because it allows you to use your own home charge point to have your own charging tariff uh, that you can choose whatever electricity provider you want so you could have special off-peak prices overnight or even dynamic tariffs that could pay you to charge your car, which previously would have been the luxury of people who have garages and driveways, but now if you've only got access to on-street parking, you still have access to those incentives as well. Of course, not everyone's going to have access to that, but the lamppost infrastructure is proving to be really successful in London. Other cities are looking to replicate that and are indeed doing so. And of course, charging hubs, the, like the, the ones that we've seen in Dundee, um, which now has four of them, three of which are owned by the council, that allows you to either slow charge or rapid charge your electric vehicle. They've built those in areas with high density housing where very few people have access to driveways and garages. And we're starting to see hubs like that being built, not just across the UK, but also across Europe as well. In fairness, I believe that Norway got there first with the likes of the hubs that they have in Bergen, for example. But nonetheless, you know, it's, it's entirely possible to build this infrastructure to make sure that everyone has access to, well, reliable access to affordable charging infrastructure. And indeed, we're already seeing that happening. Think 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, how few charge points there were in the UK. Now go on to PlugShare and see just how many there are near you, let alone across the entire country. 
There's been an exponential growth in this charging infrastructure and every single charge point installer is mega busy at the moment, even despite coronavirus. So give it another 10 years with the further exponential growth in EV numbers, those charge points will be there to charge them as well. That side of social equality is well and truly covered. See you again soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.